，立法会主席。早晨，我哋继续。Let's resume our debate on bogus refugees. Does any member wish to speak? Mr. Elvin Young. Thank you. Thank you, President. President, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, heap praise on the pro establishment uh, members. Um, Praise, uh, because they are making the bogus uh, refugee this term, a uh, household term. I'd like to discuss with them a bit of uh, logic. You call them bogus refugees by implication. There are genuine refugees um, on the other side of the coin. For them to be refugees, uh, they have to be subject to a screening mechanism. Until they are screened,、uh, you can't call them bogus because you don't really know whether they are bogus or genuine. If you jump to the conclusion that they are all bogus refugees, then lo lo this is logically flawed. President, I fully understand that、um, there are many different、uh, logics.、Um, there are. Uh, true logics, and、uh, there are logics adopted by the pro-establishment、uh, members. As logical members, I think we have to be fair in our speech. Without a shadow of doubt,、uh, in the present situation, under the、uh, non-refoulement、uh, claim mechanism, there are inadequacies, and there is a. Likelihood that people may be、uh, taking advantage of the loopholes to、um, achieve、um, personal gains, and we don't have、um, to go into detail here、uh, as long as we admit that there are loopholes. But notwithstanding the loopholes, so we cannot jump to the conclusion that、uh, those who make claims under the、um, USM are. Abusing the system as a signatory to the Convention Against Torture, as、um, my fellow colleagues、uh, said, we do have、um, the obligation to fulfil our、um, our duties under the Convention. The Council, the Councillors,、uh, do have to clarify with、um, the members of the public that、um, the government is not、uh, duty bound to provide a refuge for the refugees. We're only here to、uh, provide the Unified screening mechanism. During the debate,、uh, Mr. President, a lot of members, not least、um, the pro-establishment members, who are depicting the situation as、um, increasingly serious. Let me、uh, cite some statistics. On the 11th of November 2016, from the security panel, we were given a paper、uh, on the USM. From、uh, Q3 2015, compared with Q3 this year, the number of applications has、um, decreased by 31 percent. This steady downward trend is not a lie. Why would they say that the situation is increasingly serious, President? I think one of the major problems is that、um, the process for screening is、um, exceedingly long. For those、um, who are involved,、uh, like、um, the immigration department or the claimants、uh, themselves, and they would be、um, the ultimate victims. Even if、um, the, their claims、uh, are successful, they will not be stuck in Hong Kong. They might be sent to a third country. If they're screened out、uh, as non-refugees,、uh, they would be、uh, repatriated. Under these circumstances,、uh, President. For these、uh, claimants, the longer it takes for the、um, screening process, the harder it would be for them. So it's going to be、um, good for anybody at all. So this、uh, lengthy screening process, we appreciate it.、Um, there is this element of、um, resources, and in the past, I'm sure that、uh, members from、um, 
uh, across the political divide uh, or argued that uh, there should be more resources devoted to uh, the handling of these cases. We don't quibble over that, but what we are quibbling over is um, including uh, Mr. Holden Chow's original motion and also um, the pro-establishment uh, members' uh, remarks about uh, criminality. We'd like to uh, discuss uh, with the pro-establishment uh, members um, the, the logic, of course, um, that there may be criminal elements uh, in any uh, ethnic communities. But if uh, we simply say that um, just because one or two criminals exist in a community, uh, we jump to the conclusion that the whole community are, are committing crimes. Between oh, um, 2012 and 2015, 2,514 Lingonet visitors were convicted of criminal offence. Are we jumping to the conclusion that all these uh, individual uh, visitors from the mainland are criminals? Do we have to have a closed camp um, to incarcerate all the mainland visitors, that this is logically flawed? If we apply the same logic to this motion, it would be the same. President, the Civic Party uh, feels that to address um, this lengthy screening process, uh, we should simply uh, expedite uh, the process that was touched on before. In 2015-16, the Immigration Department has um, got 251 posts uh, for this process. In 16-17, there will be an additional 83. I think this is a step in the right direction. This is the uh, answer to the problem. I'd like to, to say, uh, Mr. President, that in the original motion, Mr. Holden Chow has suggested a, a uh, closed camp. I think this is um, divorced from reality. Take Australia, for instance. They have a similar arrangement to deal with refugees. But we can see that um, in these uh, closed camps, uh, when they lose their freedom and uh, dignity, it would uh, be a recipe for greater problems. And, and conflicts uh, in the community. I hope that um, the poor established members would uh, look clearly at that. President, I think we should avoid uh, stigmatizing these um, people. As electrical councillors, we urge the administration to um, get across a clear message to the community in order to avoid any stigma attached to these people. Mr. Wong Kwok Kin. President, this is um, a realistic issue. This is not um, a theoretical issue. Any rhetoric uh, to uh, wiggle out of the problem uh, will not um, stand us in good stead. Certainly, there would be um, righteous uh, rhetoric uh, advanced by members so that we should treat uh, the, the refugees in a humane manner. We never argue against um, this humane treatment, never. What we're debating today uh, are the bogus refugees. So I hope that um, the Pandam members uh, will not uh, con uh, confuse the issue. They should not just um, take the moral high ground and advance um, this hollow rhetoric. <coughs> In 2014, uh, the government uh, launched the unified screening mechanism uh, the number of applicants uh, has uh, surged, and we've seen uh, people abusing the system. According to uh, security uh, chief under the uh, USM, uh, since this uh, was started, uh, the number of applicants has increased uh, by threefold, um, like uh, 440 per month. As of uh, end of 2015, there is a backlog of um, 11,000 people who are uh, in the in the on the waiting list. Mr. Alvin Young uh, said that the uh, processing time is um, exceedingly long. Uh, he's um, attributing uh, to the, uh, the um, slow process on the part of the Immigration Department. That's my understanding of uh, what he said. According to the administration, a lot of the non refoulement claimants are uncooperative. Uh, they refuse to make available evidence and documents or, or they um, miss um, the interview with um, the officials um, on the ground of um, illness. And these um, screening processes are um, extended and extended. According to the Bureau, 70% um, of um, the claimants 
were intercepted um, and arrested uh, by the police and immigration department, and then they uh, locked the uh, claim and refused to be uh, repatriated. I mean, it's hard not to um, imagine that these claimants are abusing the system in order to stay in Hong Kong. They stay in Hong Kong for um, two or three years or as long as um, ten years. In some cases, um, they got married and uh, have a family in Hong Kong. They take full advantage of the complicated and long process of screening. They take up uh, unlawful employment for personal gains, and they try to uh, get as much as they can get uh, from Hong Kong. Under the law, these uh, non refoulement claims stay in Hong Kong, and they can get the reconnaissance uh, papers. Under the law, they're not supposed to work for humane humanitarian reason. They will be given financial support. Each uh, claimant uh, will be entitled to about $3,000 living allowances, uh, like supermarket coupons, um, rent um, allowance and, and transportation um, allowance, and, and so on. All these uh, bills are picked up by the taxpayers in Hong Kong. We're still, we've seen um, newspaper experts say that um, the bogus refugees are, are working as um, porters, um, dishwashers, and also construction site workers, and so on. It's not hard for you to identify them if the uh, pen, pen democratic members are casting doubt on this, and they might wish to have, have a look at the logistics um, work in remote areas, and the loading and unloading work, and also in the fruit market at night, uh, how many of them are working as porters uh, in the middle of the night. It's not hard to, to find them. Please um, do not um, leap to, to their defense and be divorced from reality. These bogus refugees are working in Hong Kong are uh, taking away jobs uh, from the grassroots people, and they're also giving rise to law and order problems. So we strongly urge the administration to step up law enforcement. Other than illegal workers, the bogus refugees are causing concerns uh, about law and order. According to a security bureau, non-Chinese people committing criminal offenses. Uh, there, there has been um, a rising trend in 2013. 608 in 2015, it's gone up to 1,100. Most of them are non refoulement claimants. These bogus refugees are not only causing financial burden, they're also taking jobs away from Hong Kong people, and they are posing a threat to law and order. Law enforcement may only be the uh, treating the symptoms, so we're not dealing with the root cause of the problem. The complicated screening process is one of the reasons. Since there are many people who are jumping to the defense in Hong Kong, like the, uh, some of the politicians, uh, some of the social workers, or some of the um, people with um, a vested interest in the legal community, um, these uh, bogus refugees uh, think, think that um, they, they have a refuge uh, in Hong Kong and try to gain um, benefits from Hong Kong. There are some uh, syndicates um, that are arranging them to come to Hong Kong um, and provide them with a legal service uh, for, um, for personal gains. Some turn up in Hong Kong with um, lawyers' uh, business cards. I think everything is um, premeditated. The bogus refugees are causing financial burden to Hong Kong, uh, they're taking jobs away, and law and order problem. And all these uh, people um, involved um, in arranging them uh, to come to Hong Kong should be held responsible. And politicians who are leaping to their defense should also be held responsible. We urge the administration to consider immediately setting up um, the closed camps. At least um, they should be made to. Um, Head over the available information for, for their status to be verified before they're allowed to leave. Thank you. Are you? Dr. Chen Chong Tai. Good morning, President. Yesterday, I've heard 
um, the speeches of the pro-establishment and non-pro-establishment member speeches. Well, I felt not very happy when I heard what pro-establishment members said. Now, in the past, localist groups were um, criticized of uh, not accepting outsiders easily. Well, well, they the localists have been criticized as uh, fascist and being xenophobic. We are having this uh, great economic uh, opportunities, and we are not taking good advantage of it. Why are we? These two issues are related. In on this refugee issue, pro-establishment members said one point, and that is the refugees will um, bring a heavy burden to Hong Kong society. But then, individual visit scheme and also one-way permit measures are also bringing the same problem to the Hong Kong community. And that is, we are distorting the Hong Kong community and the governance cost in Hong Kong is rising. Well, maybe it's not right to compare the two scenarios. I think the bogus refugee issue is relatively simpler. Why did I say so? This is very much an administrative issue, a procedure a issue has to do with procedures, and also this is also a political issue, administrative issue. In this debate, since the HKSAR has joined the CAT, and we signed up to this convention as part of the nation. But then in March 2014, we started the USM. And as a result, government departments, as and especially the frontline offices, cannot cope with such a onerous workload. So to resolve the problem is ver is to do it um, through administrative means, increase manpower, streamline procedures, and then will it be able to resolve the problem? But the government didn't do it. Why? Because they are lazy. Why? Or how? Well, maybe we can or remember that uh, there was this incident that there was a group of South Asian people in Yunlong uh, beating up the police officers in Hong Kong. And it gives us the impression that the um, police officers are no good at all. And at the same time, when the immigration officers, because of language and cultural barriers, um, they well, they no, not like to um, come to work and they fake illness. Well, these can be resolved through administrative means, not only just by increasing manpower, but uh, rather changing the culture of work, and the quality of the offices has to be enhanced as well. Now, in the past two years, the government has been too lazy, and has been procrastinating. And it won't deal with it until the problem gets worse. Is now there are some ten thousand people on the waiting list, and the pro-establishment member said that this is a social issue that must be tackled. Let's be fair. Without this group of people, you would not have an easy task in your electioneering campaign. Well, on the fourth of September, well, a number of South Asian um, people came to support you in your election activities. Now, the Security Bureau and the Immigration Department said that they um, have certain measures to be put in place. There would be an uh, online registration system for the Indians. They would um, uh, add 83 posts, posts uh, bringing the total number of officers from 205 to 288, and the um, stream, the um, screening procedure will, or time, will be cut to 15 weeks. While refugee problem is a world trend, 
Why do I say that is both a political and administrative issue? Why is this political issue uh, appearing in Hong Kong? The pro establishment members, if they don't treat Hong Kong as a sovereign state, then that won't be a problem. But in Germany, US and UK, they have a um, democratic system, and the presidents are facing social pressure, urging them to deal with the problems brought about by refugees. These are political issues um, in their countries, because they are nations. And why do we have to deal with the problem in Hong Kong? Hong Kong is also having its own um, administrative procedures. We are de facto um, sovereign st state, and so why do we have to deal with this problem? And that is because the uh, chief executive is not returned by universal suffrage, and he said casually that Hong Kong can withdraw from the CAT. Don't l laugh about it. And if we go down that route, we will be relegated to a place even worse than the colony. Hong Kong is a signatory CAT, and that is a, a testimony to Hong Kong being a civilized state. If we are to withdraw from the convention, then we are telling the world that Hong Kong is uh, backpedaling or retrograding. We can't see Hong Kong being turned into a city in China. So I speak to object the motion. Mr. Hattet Hoi. The USM has been abused, and this is an objective fact. If you go by the government statistics, you will know this. In the debate, many members said that the mechanism has been abused, and many people are stranded in Hong Kong. They bring problems to the social welfare system, the economic system, and the um, employment market. These are really facts and indisputable. Now, what can be disputed is or argued is what approaches we will adopt to deal with these um, claimants. How can we cut down on the abuse of the mechanism? And at the same time, we can um, defend the rights or uphold the rights of these claimants. So in the original motion and the amendments, there are measures proposed to deal with the problem including setting up uh, holding, settles, uh, holding centers. Is it going to be in a form of a closed cam? If it is the case, will it meet with um, international humanitarian standards? There are different uh, proposals uh, presented, say, putting in a time f uh, limit for them to apply for legal assistance. Well, we have to consider that uh, thoroughly. Well, there will be a merits test under the legal aid sy uh, system. Um, whether the claimant is a real uh, refugee, whether he will face persecution, if he is repatriated to his home country, his rights will be eroded. There are uh, objective professional standards to examine these aspects. So if the claimant really meets the prescribed standards, should we be really setting a limit to the level of assistance? Why are you proposing this? Is it because they are um, from South Asia? That's why we are putting limits on our assistance to them? Or is it because they are um, adversely affecting Hong Kong's economy, the um, local workers, um, and their rights have to be um, taken away from them? And is it because that they are refugees? What they are entitled to uh, should be taken away from them.
in the many amendments, there are some feasible、uh, measures. Say, for example,、uh, would there be any notification mechanism whereby a publicity、um, in their home country can be done? Uh, to tell them that、um, when they come to Hong Kong, they won't have a good living; they can't find a work. These are、uh, feasible measures. And can we、uh, set up notification mechanism with the central authorities, or even resort to diplomatic means、uh, to do more、um, at the、uh, home countries of these refugees? These are all feasible. And many members are also、uh, speaking about the actual problems we are facing. Um, the prof professionalism involved in the screening, the resources committed to the process, etc., and whether we are providing professional training to those handling the claims. So, if we can devote more resources to expedite the screening, then the problem can be fixed. So, when many pro-establishment members. Uh, say that when we、um, highlight their rights, talk about their rights, are we defending them too much? What my reply is: If the refugees are are、uh, posing heavy burden to our social welfare system and creating problems to our、uh, employment market, then we must、um, take away their rights, and I don't think that's right. This is, a, if you say so, this is an extreme rightist,、uh, conservative、uh, thinking, and you are discriminating against people of different nationalities. This is a kind of popul、um, populism which sh we should be concerned about. What we need to do is to strike,、uh, strive to strike a balance. How to、um, ensure that we can expedite the screening process? How? We can cut down on the number of claims under the USM and、uh, slash the number of people、um, staying in Hong Kong. I believe that we can use administrative means to resolve the problem and at the same time uphold the rights and dignity of these claimants. Please look at. Don't look at the. Problem from a populist perspective, and I think this、uh, should be the focus of our debate this time. So I speak. Mr. Guo Weicheng, thank you, President. Good morning, President. I've heard、uh, so many members speaking on、uh, the debate on bogus refugees. I think uh, this uh, is revealing. Who care about the、uh, deployment of resources in Hong Kong? Who are being generous at the expense of the taxpayer? Well, everything is revealed through this debate. Bogus refugee is a hot topic in the community. It is a problem,、uh, according to some people, because of the stance adopted by the sensational media. I have to point out. That if、uh, there are genuine refugees who lost their homes due to war or natural disaster, or、well, I'm not、uh, against these people. It's a, a good. It's good that we help these genuine refugees. But as a matter of fact, in recent years, we are there are a large number of people coming from、uh, Southeast South Asia and、uh, such as、uh, Vietnam, India, Pakistan. And so on. These countries are not at war, and we have seldom heard that、uh, when these、uh, bogus refugees are repatriated, that、uh, they will be、um, persecuted in their home countries. Most of these、uh, claimants are overstayers. They will only lodge a claim after they have been、uh, apprehended by the police or the immigration department. The majority of these claimants, on average, have、uh, stayed in Hong Kong illegally for 19 months. And after a re 
uh, non refoulement claim is uh, made. We offer humanitarian aid. But these people uh, have, on average, stayed illegally in Hong Kong for 19 months without the need for such aid. And there's a more serious issue. Are these people coming to Hong Kong for making a non refoulement claim? Well, this is not actually what they wanted in the first place. They only file a claim after they are found to have overstayed. So this uh, is just a, a means to legitimize their overstaying. And they want to prolong their stay as soon as possible. In the long term, bogus refugees are going to present a serious financial burdens. According to Lechco information paper, we have spent $1.1 billion or $500 million more than the, previous year, than the previous year in handling such claims. And uh, these claimants are using our public health system uh, to the tune of $40 million in costs in uh, 2015. And SWD has provided uh, $800 million in aid to these uh, claimants. And if the, the claims are not substantiated, we have to buy the air tickets uh, to repatriate them to their home countries. It costs us $7 million. According to the legal aid department, in 2015-2016, these claimants uh, re have been given legal aid costing us uh, $10 million. According to the Correctional Services Department, if these claimants commit some offenses, they, are, they have 20, 217 inmates who are holders of uh, reconnaissance form, and uh, the average uh, cost is uh, 300 $40,000 per email. So annually speaking, we have to spend $70 million to maintain them. And altogether, we are talking about $2 billion altogether. And if we do not do anything about the situation, the, uh, the expenditure will continue to rise. Not all the non refoulement claimants are bogus refugees. But we also note that uh, only a few cases were substantiated based on past record. Some over 90% uh, were not substantiated. Less than 10% uh, were. So if we uh, allow the, the abuse, if we allow the misuse of public resources, those uh, who are in genuine need uh, will not be given aid uh, timely. Some say this, this is uh, going to have a labeling effect. I think the reverse is true. There are ethnic minorities, South Asians, who are holders of permanent uh, identity card. Bogus refugees uh, tarnish their image. So, Resolving this problem of bogus refugees uh, would uh, sp speed up uh, inclusion and accommodation of uh, ethnic minorities in Hong Kong. So this is an urgent matter. Apart from expenditure, uh, that is money, uh, some members have pointed out that uh, these uh, bogus refugees also uh, work illegally and they are causing law and order problems. And all these problems are real. Oh, shouldn't we tackle these uh, problems head on? I think so. If we uh, do not uh, deal with these, these claims sp speedily, uh, the claimants will have to be stranded in Hong Kong for a long time. They can't work. They 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 waste their time and their and their lives. And at, at the same time, they expend a lot of resources of Hong Kong. And as a result, uh, genuine uh, refugees uh, will not be fairly treated. Uh, it's not fair to our ethnic minority citizens. So we should uh, 
join hands in uh, tackling the problems. If we all act like the pan-democrats and turn a bright eye to the real problem, Hong Kong would uh, lose off. President, good morning. Point of order. I don't. I think we are very short of a quorum here.
中國殯儀。Mr. Mr. Christopher Chung, President, I've just heard that some uh, pandemocrats suggesting that uh, are we trying to uh, eliminate uh, the rights entitled by the refugees? But we're talking about bogus refugees. So we would uh, continue to. Uh, Confer the uh, entitled rights of to the genuine refugees, but if we are talking about bogus refugees, why should they be treated the same? And because of this problem, uh, and uh, chambers of commerce representing ethnic minorities, Pakistanis and the Indians uh, have approached me. These people have been in Hong Kong for generations, and they have highlighted that this problem. Although that these uh, bogus refugees are from their home countries, uh, they are saying that uh, because of the illegal employment uh, of these people, the, their image has been tarnished. And some other Hong Kong people are looking uh, at them with a taint pair of tainted glasses. So they have asked the Liberal Party to do something about it, so that uh, uh, our the ethnic minorities uh, in Hong Kong would not be discriminated against. We all know that. The so-called one-stop service is being offered to South Asians. There are publicity campaigns there, telling people that they can come to Hong Kong to get a work permit. The work permit is, is actually the uh, reconnaissance form, and they and they are misled into thinking that uh, with the re reconnaissance form they can uh, take up employment. Uh, Vietnam is a uh, Prospering economically is uh, close to full employment. Are there political persecution? Uh, comparatively speaking, uh, not on a uh, large scale. But if they can come to work in Hong Kong, they earn a higher income. Uh, the income in Hong Kong uh, is much higher than uh, what they would have earned in Vietnam. So they are told that, that they can get a reconnaissance form and work, and therefore loads of them come. And when they arrive uh, by air, they have lawyers uh, helping them with all the formalities. They, f they think that they can start to work right away. And I know that uh, some of them would uh, make copies of the, the reconnaissance form and distribute the same to their compatriots. And when uh, they are intercepted on the street, uh, well, the, they will show the police officer a, a photocopy. And uh, my, uh, the true copy or the original is in, in my home. And then they start to speak uh, their own uh, native language. And very often, uh, this would enable them to go to, uh, f free. There are more and more such cases. And that's why we have this motion to pay. That's why we want to uh, uh, get some deterrence. And uh, we want to have close uh, uh, holding centers. If they are housed in such centers, they cannot go out to work. Then there's no point. In coming to Hong Kong, we can give them meals and accommodation, but that's not what they want, and so certainly this is going to be a big de a deterrence. And secondly, SAR, the Hong Kong SAR government should uh, work with the national governments to the, do some publicity, tell them that the reconnaissance form that they can get. Uh, Will not be a work permit, so we do need to tackle the problem at source. We need to uh, get in touch with the governments, and work with them. 
And this, of course, thirdly, we need to take a look at our processing mechanism. This is a lengthy process. Uh, there is one appeal after another. The all together, the entire uh, mechanism would take seven or eight years to complete. There should be a time limit, so that uh, firstly. The claimants will be housed in a closed holding center. Secondly, that they would be uh, pro their case will be cases will be processed very quickly, and there's no profit to, to get. So I submit. Mr. Lam Chak Ting, President. For bogus refugees, of course, uh, we have to um, object to them staying in Hong Kong, but. How do we define uh, bogus refugees? Is it uh, down to one word of um, a government official? Hong Kong is a place uh, where there is rule of law. We have to subject them uh, to the screening process, and this is um, a precious um, system that uh, we have to uphold. If people turn up in Hong Kong claiming that um, they are being persecuted, they can. Um, Make a claim uh, until uh, we we verify the status of um, the the their their status. Um, we should not um, simply or lightly incarcerate them in a closed camp. That is not um, from Lam Chak Ting. Uh, this is uh, from the court uh, appeal court. Until you ascertain somebody's status, uh, you're not supposed to. Restrict um, their freedom uh, because this is um, against um, the the bills of bill of rights. So we are against um, the notion of um, a close camp um, proposed by the pro establishment members. Of course, if uh, someone um, has been screened out as uh, non refugees, a uh, non refugee, and um, the appeal process. Um, has um, been completed. Uh, it, it is understandable that um, they be held um, pending repatriation. There are members who suggested that um, a time limit be imposed uh, on the application. Is it feasible? I think the key thing is um, to have regard to different circumstances. In some cases, these people. Uh, may not have the intention of um, applying for um, the or making the non refoulement claims, but there may be a situation where the um, circumstances at home um, are deteriorating rapidly, and we cannot say that um, within uh, one or two weeks um, after their arrival they have to make an application. Uh, then we're not uh, really able to deal with um, the situation properly. There are some members uh, who suggested that um, there should be a cap uh, on the uh, legal aid. You may impose um, a cap on the number of cases that can be taken on uh, by uh, a certain law firm, or you may uh, say that um, you would limit the uh, number of hours devoted or number of interviews and so on, that there would be operational difficulties. The law firms um, render assistance um, to these claimants uh, through legal aid uh, will become uh, more efficient um, after they've built up enough experience. And if they've built up enough experience, uh, there would be more uh, or fail with um, the procedures and the background, um, the cultural background, political situation of um, these claimants. And these law firms, if um, they are familiar with um, the situation, they would be able to um, improve or enhance the, the efficiency in a way we can save um, taxpayers' money. If um, we farm out uh, the cases to Lawyers who are unfamiliar with the situation, and they have um, to to go up the learning curve, and they have to um, get to grips with um, the cultural background of different countries and the procedures and so on. And there would um, be 
uh, not be sufficiently efficient. Of course, if there is uh, competition among the uh, legal uh, fraternity, it would be a good idea. But uh, we're not sure uh, whether we will be able to, to increase the efficiency. You might argue that we should impose a limit uh, on the number of hours devoted and the amount of money uh, that would be available um, for the uh, law firms and the number of interviews is infeasible because in Hong Kong all uh, hearings have to be fair. If the claimant uh, has a lot of evidence, a lot of information, the law firm uh, cannot simply say uh, that, sorry, we hit the limit, uh, we cannot uh, render any more assistance. Or they cannot say that um, we have already done what the legal aid um, department is asking us um, to do, and we cannot do any, any more. If they have um, sufficient evidence, um, the, the law firm has to deal with um, these uh, issues. And this is a matter of principle. Dr. An Chung, President, uh, Mr. Lam Chak Ting, I referred to the law firms um, in the context of um, the non refoulement claims. I remember during the last term, uh, we did have a, a fair amount of discussion on the bogus refugees and non refoulement claims. And the, um, some lawyers, uh, like uh, Mr. Albert Ho uh, from the uh, DP, did make a declaration uh, that um, he um, dealt with um, these cases. I haven't heard any declaration of interest uh, from um, our legal uh, colleagues um, during this term. Um, I think if there is any um, interest involved, uh, please make the declaration. President, I heard from some members, uh, not least um, Mr. Alvin Young, who said that in Hong Kong there are different um, ethnic communities um, that are visiting Hong Kong and they, they are likely to commit criminal offences. It is true that um, people from different um, ethnic groups and different uh, jurisdictions are coming to Hong Kong might get involved uh, in criminal offences. Now there may be people coming to Hong Kong to take up a lawful employment or they overstay their visa, they, they're involved in theft and, and, and some other kinds of criminality. We are aware of that, that happened in the past. But why is it that uh, we're deeply concerned about the issue? It is because um, these people who came to <coughs> Hong Kong for um, employ uh, for employment, and if they're arrested, um, they have they'd have to be sent to jail, and and then they'll be um, repatriated. But there are skillful lawyers um, who are pointing them in the right direction, and they are uh, letting them um, make. Um, the non refoulement claims and they can stay for as long as 10 years or a minimum of a um, couple of years and they get a reconnaissance paper and um, get jobs in Hong Kong. So these people who are minded to stay in Hong Kong, um, the number is uh, rising. They make money in Hong Kong and remit um, their wages uh, back home and and people are flooding into Hong Kong, pouring into Hong Kong from these countries. So over the years, we have seen um, increasing number of people pouring into Hong Kong from these countries. It's not the case that we don't welcome them. I heard from another member a moment ago who said that the EMs, or ethnic minorities, are part of Hong Kong, the South Asians um, are part of Hong Kong, they're making contribution to Hong Kong, and we should not um, label them. Now, these are two separate uh, issues altogether. I can tell you that a couple of years ago, I received um, a complaint uh, from um, a South Asian, because um, 
they said that they've got people coming from their hometown and they turn up in Hong Kong and ring them up and, and say that they're short of money and they um, touch them for uh, just uh, some money. They they said that um, we know where you are, where you work and who your parents are back home. And if they don't concede, then it is likely that um, they will be um, assaulted. They will be chopped up. So we've seen all these cases um, in which um, the um, ethnic minorities are attacking their own kind. Are you aware of that? These um, ethnic minorities um, have been working and contributing in Hong Kong. They lack um, protection. They live in fear. Uh, I've got a an, an Indian uh, person uh, who was born and brought up in Hong Kong. He said that um, his um, employee um, got attacked and uh, had some jewelry um, taken away. And he's in 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 the uh, jewelry business. And recently he was attacked, and he um, he he had some uh, jewelry stolen from him. So he's asking for some protection. Now we welcome um, these um, ethnic minorities uh, people. We are on good terms with them. What we're asking now is uh, simply to speed up um, the, the screening uh, of um, the, the claimants um, to verify whether they are genuine. Mr. Holden Chow suggested the, the notion of a closed camp. Now this is um, also with reference to the non-establishment uh, members' views, and they are saying that um, they they don't have a decent life and they they have bad accommodation, they have a desirable um, life in Hong Kong, and it would be um, not, not not a bad idea to have some um, kind of closed camps. We're not. Um, Banning them from uh, coming out, uh, I mean, that at least um, there would be some assistance uh, rendered to them. I think we have to understand the, the situation um, for what it is. That the bogus refugee issue um, was um, the subject for discussion since the last term, and Mr. Horton Chow moved this motion, and we're not talking simply about um, one single ethnic minority group, and the crime rate has been increasing uh, up to 2015 uh, for part, for the past five years. So we've seen um, the crime rate um, doubled. We're not saying that they should not make application for non uh, for um, non refoulement claims. We're asking for a closed camp uh, so that we would be able <coughs> to have a one stop shop um, to render assistance to them. I speak in support of the motion by Mr. Holden Chow. Mr. Dennis Kwok, Madam Deputy, first of all, I would like to respond to uh, the remarks made by Dr. En Zhang. She said that uh, some lawyers who were uh, legislators uh, declared their interest in the last session. For myself, I haven't worked on non refoulement claims uh, cases myself, so there is nothing to declare from me. But I would like to clarify that many legal um, practitioners uh, are handling non um claims, and some of the cases get even to the um, court of appeal, final court of appeal, and many lawyers and barristers have uh, paid a lot of efforts in handling these cases, and the cases get to the CFA. They set out um, um, very important legal considerations in the cases. So do not say casually that um, some legal practitioners are um, helping the claimants to lodge claims to cheat Hong Kong government and to get a, gain advantage of resources in Hong Kong. Please be clear-minded. If you have evidence to show that there are barristers and uh, lawyers who are doing this, please present the evidence to us. I believe that the Law Society and the Bar Association will deal with your complaints so that these black horse 
will not casually provide legal advice to the claimants. You plot, you must give us evidence. You should not smear the legal sector. Well, on the issue of refugees, well, we have to be mindful of the international trends. The world over is facing refugee problem, refugees coming from Syria and also from other areas with um, unstable conditions. So Hong Kong can not be an exception to the problem. We are an international city, and we must admit that we have the international uh, obligation to face up to the problem to handle it. It's not. It should not be like what the media and political parts, some political parts, said that these uh, non-ethnic Chinese bogus refugees are creating uh, problems in Hong Kong. They have committed crimes. And they blow things out of proportion. And Mr. Felix Chong said that some chambers of commerce uh, told him that because he was he is an ethnic minority and he is being discriminated against, is this a Hong Kong that we want to see? Should we be acting like some media and political parties who are um, ex making exaggerations of the problem so that uh, such that Hong Kong people think that this is a very, very serious problem? And the problem is so serious that we must do something. And the public is being misled. So when they see some non uh, Chinese uh, people on the streets, they have discrimination against them. This is something that we definitely not want to see happening in Hong Kong. The world over is facing a refugee problem. The problem in Hong Kong is so serious that we have to discuss it every day and move motions like this uh, in the chamber in the council, and they think that the the problem is so big that warrants uh, extraordinary measures um, to uh, deal with it. Well, let's not talk about whether we to we need to review USM. I think the USM should have commenced a long time ago. It should not be like what the government did, they about passing the buck. Well, until the time when they lost the case in the CFA and they have to redo it, um, the the whole mechanism again. And those uh, who have lodged re non refoulement claims in Hong Kong have to relodge their application, and the process gets uh, protracted. A lot of people that I've come into contact with say that they don't want to stay in Hong Kong. They can't work in Hong Kong, and my children don't have a future either. They are stranded in Hong Kong, and they have a difficult life. They want to leave as soon as they can. But the problem is, if the government doesn't commit more resources into the USM and make sure the work is done with the greatest efficiency, then the problem cannot be fixed. I hope that we should really focus on the crux of the matter and use the appropriate measures to deal with the problems in the USM. What is most important is to expedite the application procedures and the handling procedures and to prevent people using um, unreasonable grounds to procrastinate and prevent abuse. What can we do? <coughs> After so many years of experience, we see that there are so the so-called bogus refugees who lodged the reform and claim, reform and claims, they would not go to attend the uh, first interview because they know that they don't have sufficient grounds and they don't attend the first interview and they are allowed to uh, attend a second and third interview. And this is uh, cumbersome and wasting time. doesn't help. As for the training of the legal uh, team, there is insufficient training, and ha training has to be strengthened. 
So in terms of resources, procedures and measures, if we can do a better job, then I believe that the pr problem can be alleviated. The Civic Party agrees that uh, we should review comprehensively the USM, but we don't agree to the proposal of a closed camp because it will involve huge resources and it goes against human rights and it can't fix the problem either. So I speak. Mr. Ma Fung Kwok, Madam Deputy, in recent years, there have been many more people coming from economic backward entities coming to Hong Kong uh, to take advantage of Hong Kong's uh, status as a signatory to the CAT, and the um, mechanism has been abused and different problems arise, and we're concerned about it. Those who make non refundment claims come into Hong Kong through legal or illegal means, and after they are in Hong Kong, they lodge non refundment claims, and they are making taking advantage of the legal procedures to store the, uh, the procedures so that they can stay longer in Hong Kong. And on humanitarian grounds, the government has to give um, some welfare benefits to the claimants, and that poses a burden to Hong Kong society. Some of them work as illegal workers, and because they are earning a lower pay, so some employers would take the risk to hire them. There are reports saying that the police has have arrested illegal workers who are non-refoundment claimants. They try to cheat their employers. Their behavior will um, affect job opportunities for local people. And what's more problematic is some of them are involved in triad activities and they pose adverse impact on the law and order situation in Hong Kong. And they really affect those who really need uh, non refoulement protection. The administration has taken a number of measures to tackle the problem. For example, the police, immigration department, labor department uh, will conduct a surprise uh, inspections and arrest these illegal workers. And they are also working with the mainland authorities to step up combating the uh, syndicates, human trafficking syndicates. Uh, people often risk, take risks as long as there is a profit to, to be made. So the snake heads and the um, foreigners are still um, resorting to non refoulement claims and try to come to um, Hong Kong and stay in Hong Kong. Um, the problem is uh, deteriorating and there have been uh, different suggestions um, in the community. There are suggestions that there should be uh, close to camps, and some even say that we, we, we should withdraw entirely from the CAT. I don't agree to the idea of holding centers or close camps because it's, the, it's contentious and um, there will be a lot of adoption. And we have to use a lot of manpower resources to manage the closed camps if they are set up. And non refoulement claimants are not criminals either. And the government don't have a good reason to um, lock them up and and in the society where human rights are, are upheld, it's difficult to implement uh, this idea. And withdrawing from the CAT will also um, involve um, how the central authorities uh, see, see it, and it's difficult to make a decision. So we should not paint everyone with the same brush in dealing with a problem. What we are targeting should be those um, refugees coming from uh, countries who are not war-stricken, and they come here for just to, to make money, and they are abusing the system. We don't want this um, issue to deteriorate into um, something, into um, creating hatred among the different um, minorities. We should not reject everyone across the board. In fact, the government has um, adopted targeted measures in combating the problem and initial results have been yielded. In the first 10 months of this year, the, there have been um, 71 percent more law enforcement actions uh, than compa compared to last year, and the number of 
um, workers and employers arrested has increased by 26% and 44% respectively. And I hope that the government will continue to uh, conduct such law enforcement actions and uh, minimize uh, the impact of these normally farming claimants on the society. Many suggestions have been floated in the debate. I would like to say something about the USM. According to some initial figures, the admission said that um, the lawyers are given 49 days uh, for to get to get instructions from their claimants, and after the uh, application forms have been received, uh, 13 weeks uh, will be uh, allowed before the um, interview is arranged. And some claimants uh, have deliberately not attended the interviews to try to procrastinate. So there are indeed loopholes in the system, and we need to remedy the situation. And some members also suggested that we should commit more resources to expedite the screening uh, mechanism and um, shorten the timetable so that the applications can be dealt with more expeditiously and we should uh, prevent the claimants uh, for overstaying in Hong Kong indefinitely. We should also strengthen uh, interception at the border and try to tackle the problem at source and prevent those uh, who would like to lodge a refund or refund claim from coming into Hong Kong. Mr. Chan Hakan. Thank you. Madam Deputy, I rise to speak in support of uh, Mr. Houghton Chow's uh, motion to come back to bogus refugees. Uh, just then, Mr. Dennis Kwok uh, made a reply to Dr. N. Jiang that uh, the legal sector is not uh, in the business of helping these uh, bogus refugees. But there are reports that as soon as the, these uh, refugee, bogus refugees landed in Hong Kong, the, uh, lawyers were already there to help them. And then there's a report in the press saying that uh, the law firm uh, was expected a law firm was expected to to be uh, harboring these uh, bogus refugees because uh, they they uh, the law firm handled uh, 600 such claims and uh, there's a law another law firm said uh, 60% of the total case law were taken up by a particular law firm. So there are black sheets uh, among the legal fraternity. So if you say that the uh, pro-establishment members are being uh, biased in their criticism, uh, I don't think this uh, stands to scrutiny. If someone, uh, because of uh, political uh, persecution or war in their home countries and uh, come to Hong Kong to seek assistance. I don't think Hong Kong people would uh, refuse to give them asylum. Uh, we accept them on two grounds. First, they must be genuine refugees and they should only stay in Hong Kong for a short period of time. They should not stay in Hong Kong uh, for a stretch of uh, years. Last year, in response to the PAC report number 31, we have got this reply from the government in respect of uh, the uh, recovery of uh, money owed to us uh, due to Vietnamese uh, refugees. The UNHCR owes us uh, 1.16 billion dollars, and according to this reply, it cannot be recovered. So basically, uh, there's money going down the strain. Well, we are caring. We want to help people, but there there, there are limits. The limits uh, should be that uh, Hong Kong's interest should not be undermined. So we can only. Uh, accept uh, bogus refugees and secondly for only for a limited duration of stay in Hong Kong. 
is that uh, the pro-establishment members are uh, smearing the refugees and saying that they are the cause of uh, law and order uh, problems. Let me also quote another report from the Orient Oriental, Oriental Daily. A bogus refugee to take up illegal employment and has been jailed 15 months. Another one works for a uh, moving agency and jailed 15 months. A claimant uh, tried to blackmail uh, Standard Charter Bank, was imprisoned six months. Six uh, Pakistani bogus refugees jailed. A claimant jailed for ten years uh, for raping a friend's uh, wife. I can go on and on, on and on. But basically, we can see uh, a case every week. Uh, claimants were detained and uh, sentenced because of various offences. So how can we resolve the, uh, this problem? Uh, the, the simple solution is to set up holding centers as we set out in the motion, original motion. Uh, they are involved in illegal employment as well as uh, sexual offenses and they affect our uh, law and order and people's livelihood. Last year, 1100 uh, Torture claimants uh, were arrested for various criminal offences. Hong Kong is one of the safest uh, cities in the world. Our uh, reputation as a safe city should not be affected by these bogus refugees. Starting from uh, 2014, so we started with uh, 116 cases of uh, claimants working illegally. And uh, now we have uh, seen an increase of 40 percent. There are more than 200 cases. Uh, they take these people take up uh, lowly pay uh, jobs such as uh, cleaning workers. Uh, if these jobs are taken up by claimants, how can the grassroots get a job? They come to Hong Kong. These focus refugees come to Hong Kong to work, not to seek asylum. Yesterday, uh, yesterday a Labour Party member said, uh, "How you are smearing them? How come they would come to Hong Kong for fifteen hundred of uh, dollars of uh, food aid?" Well, they precisely they are, they, they they don't come to Hong Kong. To, for such uh, aid, but for illegal employment. I would suggest to that uh, Labour Party member to donate half of his uh, remuneration to help these uh, bogus refugees. Don't try to be generous at the expense of our taxpayers. We have spent $1.1 billion in expenditure. It's a, a, a big sum. There's an urgent need to solve uh, the bogus refugees problem. We should not uh, allow them to work illegally in Hong Kong and to compete with local people for jobs. And we should not help them by offering the so-called one-stop service. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Paul Chair, uh, my law firm and I myself do not handle any uh, Cayman cases. It's, uh, sin it's going to be more than uh, 1.1 billion dollars. Yes, last last year it was 740 million dollars. So we are spending more on these uh, bogus refugees than uh, what we did for Vietnamese uh, refugees. Yes, uh, we want to be caring. We want to. Uh, be accommodative, but there must be a limit. Some draw a line from uh, our geopolitical uh, situation or proximity or kinship. Uh, we would always draw a line. So I would uh, 
draw a line with reference to uh, whether they are sub subject to the political persecution or the uh, or th or the uh, damage done by war. Hong Kong is famous uh, for the for our people's kindness. We are a refugee community. We are no, no stranger to the pain suffered by refugees. But to what extent can we accommodate refugees and where should the line be drawn? Well, I think that's the most important issue we need to address in our debate. Starting from 2014, first quarter 2014, when we uh, implement the uh, unified screening mechanism, in the second quarter, actually the figures are dropping from the peak. If we look at the figures of illegal immigrants and non ethnic uh, Chinese uh, illegal immigrants, the numbers are uh, decrease, are dropping. So the problem is uh, has been uh, lessened to a to a small extent. Seven minutes is not a lot of time. I just want to raise a few points. In the past, uh, we did not make reference to uh, to the measures adopted by other countries facing similar refugee problems, such as the UK, the Germany, and Australia. They all adopt fast track measures. And and they also consider their plans uh, comprehensively. For lawyers who are familiar with such cases, uh, they 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 will certainly know whether those countries of origin are affected by law or internal strife. They have a list of a uh, safe uh, country source countries. Do you have? Cases of torture in the U.S. Yes, yeah, some black people are uh, tortured by police. So we should expedite the cases where the source country is subject to the torture. But some cases are clearly not really the. Refugees, they they carry our, our luggage. They travel a long way to Hong Kong. But in the Middle East, for example, Syrian refugees, uh, they they come from a country with the with the background of uh, war. And in Germany, they handle such cases within nineteen days. We should come up with our own tactics. If uh, seventy or eighty percent of our cases come from the same uh, countries, and they don't have systemic torture against their nationals there, then I don't think we spend too much time. To we should not open a file for each one of them to handle the each case. Do we have a uh, serious cases of uh, torture in uh, India, Pakistan? And Bangladesh. If not, then these cases should be expedited. We have a list of four hundred and ninety lawyers on who can handle such cases, according to Security Bureau the paper. It's not a problem with the number of lawyers. It's a, a prob, it's a problem of uh, expediting the administrative arrangements. If we can remove the bottleneck, uh, then the number of cases handled by our lawyers can be uh, increased. And the bureau uh, should uh, certainly uh, consider putting a cap on the uh, lawyers' fees. In Australia and the UK, uh, they have a cap. On such fees, so that the case will not be uh, lengthened indefinitely, but uh, in uh, despite the protest by uh, Dennis Quark, uh, there's we cannot rule out uh, black sheep in the legal fraternity. So I would uh, advocate uh, pro providing a lump sum for each case. And secondly, we should have a legal fee voucher. For the claimant to handle 
the, his case quickly so that we don't have to wrestle with uh, administrative loopholes, administrative bottlenecks. And of course, uh, we, can, we, should tr we can try to uh, inter solve the problem as source. For example, in a, in a case involving a domestic helper who has been in Hong Kong for years and suddenly the, uh, he, he or she files a torture claim. There should be more done through the fast track mechanism. And if there's a problem at source, for example, uh, the claim is lodged long after his stay in Hong Kong, and uh, and a claim is or a claim is suddenly lodged after the claimant has lost his job in Hong Kong. So we should try to uh, deal with the, the case more quickly, and don't be so naive as to start everything from scratch and carry out an investigation into the case. I hope everything can be expedited. Today, the title of is Combating Bogus Refugees. I find that wording to be disturbing. We're not talking about combating the problem, if any of the people that are referred to as bogus refugees, but uh, combating these people themselves. Well, I like to refer to them in a more humane and respectable way by calling them as they are, that is, asylum seekers. Of course, our colleagues in the pro-establishment camp who are in support of these draconian measures targeting the refugees will say that, they, that it is only the bogus ones that they are targeting, not the real asylum seekers. Thank you very much for that. But it is clear to us that many of the measures that they are talking about, such as encampment, would be applied to all asylum seekers. Such is the hypocrisy and discrimination in disguise. When our pro-establishment colleagues gleefully talk about Indian and Pakistani people gathering and scaring away local folks, they have not presented any proofs that these people are asylum, se asylum seekers. So there's no basis at all of making the connection to the worries of the, uh, to the refugees problem. In other words, are some of these local folks simply scared when they see long Chinese or colored people gathering in their neighborhood? How much of these concerns are justified? How much of that would be cultural misunderstanding or plain racial discrimination? While many of our local media seem so eager in covering news linking asylum, speaker, asylum seekers to crime, official figures never quite gel. Asylum, seek, asylum seekers committing crime represent a very small portion of the overall statistics. Some local folks may also think that asylum seekers are taking away jobs, and many of the pro-establishment uh, politi political parties like to play up on that. But official figures show that protection claimants represent only 3.4% of the overall 67, over 6,700 illegal workers arrested last year. Are, these, are there abuse of the system? Absolutely. But how much of these abuses are caused by the system themselves? According to human rights workers and lawyers, a big part of the reason of these abuse, abuses is due to the government's delay and lack of understanding and training for its personnel in dealing with such bogus claims, in which, and which in turn cause more delays in handling the cases, which results in effectively inviting or attracting more bogus claims to come in. Between March 2014 and December 2015, uh, more than 3,000 non refoulement claims have been screened, and only 18 of them were substantiated, including three on appeals. According to reports, the acceptance rate in Hong Kong, which, st which stands at 0.56% since unified screening was introduced, is one of the lowest in the developed world. The global acceptance rate is around 43%. In contrast, Germany last year screened 60% of more than 965,000 asylum uh, claims with, within five months. The United Nations Committee Against Torture stated that by denying asylum seekers the rights to work, Hong Kong forced them to live on in-kind assistance below the poverty lines for long periods of time, which rights advocates convincingly pointed out to as, to, as the cause of more illegal work and criminal activities. Many protection claimants have formed a bitter impression that Hong Kong is doing everything possible to get rid of them. 
and certainly many of our colleagues have reinforced that impression by what they have said in this debate yesterday and today. The constant reports on bogus refugees and the kinds of messages delivered by some of our esteemed colleagues in this chamber must have made an impact on the morales of the protection claimants in Hong Kong and made them for Feel, made them feel even more distressed about potentially receiving a negative decision. A couple months ago, after the movie Snowden came out, and Snowden, of course, Edward Snowden is the NSA whistleblower who came to Hong Kong to, to himself for a period of time seek asylum in Hong Kong. Uh, well, the actor who played Edward Snowden in the movie, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, made a YouTube video appeal, and Edward Snowden himself also made an appeal on Twitter for four people in Hong Kong that they call Snowden's guardian angels. Apparently for two weeks in Hong Kong, before he left, Edward Snowden stayed with two refugees couples from Sri Lanka and the Philippines in Hong Kong. And Edward Snowden said, these people have gotten up every morning in face of tragedy and persecution and go to sleep at each night with the whole family in a single bed. And though they have nothing, they risk everything to do what is right. Everything I thought I knew about bravery was nothing compared to what I saw in Hong Kong. They are not, these people were not given enough resources to get by, but they are also not allowed to work. And if they do, they face 22 months in prison. And I believe we need to do what is right for these families too. Asylum seekers are people too. They came here to escape from the horrors back home. While they may be safe from physical dangers here in Hong Kong, but they fear day and night about being sent back. According to the volunteers working with asylum seekers, Many of them said in Hong Kong they live, but they have low life. And this is the people that our pro-establishment colleagues have so eagerly tried to, have so eagerly been trying to put them into camps. This is why I find the original motion and the amendments by our pro-establishment colleagues to be so deplorable with the ignorance of the real root cause of the problem, that is the government, and the exaggeration in its nature and the fear-mongering in its tone. If we dare call ourselves an international city, let's act like one and take up the international responsibility and show the world the kindness that we Hong Kong can offer. Mr. Raymond Chen. Thank you, President. Today we're debating the motion on combating bogus refugees and moved by Mr. Holden Chow. Bogus refugees, I find this uh, wholly distasteful. I don't think uh, this council should accept um, these uh, weddings in the first place. Like uh, if some members were to uh, move a motion on combating uh, locusts, I don't think this is acceptable either. Now these um, non refoulement Claimants that uh, may be black sheep. Uh, Mr. Gary Chen uh, brandished um, the newspaper cut cuttings. There were so many of them. It's just like uh, some mainland uh, visitors or new arrivals. Um, they may behave in an uncivilized manner. Just because of um, these uh, uncivilized uh, behavior doesn't mean that we should label them, we should stigmatize them as bogus refugees or as uh, locusts. The same logic applies. I fully understand that um, by labeling them it would um people would uh, resonate with them more easily it would uh, whip up uh, resentment easily bogus means um deceiving uh, if they're deceiving they are bad people and they should be um tackled so their logic uh, runs like this this topic um was um brought up by um, Mr. Ip Kwok Him, um, Mr. Holden Chow's uh, party member uh, during the last term. He uh, raised a motion regarding measures um, to tackle the bogus refugees during the last term. As members probably aware, uh, we had um, uh, a we broke down in the debate uh, over um, the doctor's registration, so I didn't make it. Now, this um, bogus refugee 
was um, manipulated uh, by the uh, pro establishment members um, as part of the election. Of course, we can debate um, the, the policy. We can debate um, this uh, whole backlog of um, claimants um, in Hong Kong. How, how do we deal with um, these illegal immigrants? How to deal with um, the problem at source? All these can be discussed. But you, you um, title it as uh, combating bogus refugees. It shows that you're not uh, really sincerely wanting to debate. You sensationalize um, the issue, and you are um, whipping up uh, resentment. Now, some members moving amendments um, were smart enough um, to say that um, they, these people are perceived to be bogus refugees. And Ms. Eunice Young said that um, there are suspected um, bogus refugees. I think they are put, putting it in a more indirect way instead of uh, saying this uh, out loud from their mouth. Ms. Dr. Fernando Jung uh, was uh, attacked um, that that uh, he uh, for being the um, the father of uh, bogus refugees. Uh, people were trying to smear him. Um, I beg your pardon. Dr. Fernando Jung was um, returned uh, with um, high number of votes. There is a lack of um, issues for them to um, strike a chord uh, with the general public. Let me cite to something. Um, I tell you who this is from. Uh, he was said that uh, some pro-establishment uh, members played up um, the refugee issue and they played the. Um, National sentiment card uh, for the sake of um, the election, and they uh, highlight this highlighted the desperation of uh, the pro establishment members. Uh, they have they've got nothing else uh, more um, uh, lofty to strike a chord with members. And there are some people uh, labeling uh, mainland visitors as locusts, and they are doing just the same thing. And this is um, showing themselves up as um, hypocrites. Uh, this is um, by. Michael Chugani, a famous colonist in Hong Kong. He's um, an Indian by descent. He's an American, Indian American. He's neither um, yellow ribbon and nor a uh, pro um, pandemocrat. And he was um, he couldn't bear that, uh, bear with that. And he wrote um, an article um, highlighting this particular phenomenon in Hong Kong. If you want to debate um, policy, I've got a script here. I don't want to follow my script. I'd just like to respond to what they said yesterday. Many people, many members said they want to help the genuine refugees, but um, without knowing um, w without knowing that, that, that they're bogus, how can we help the genuine ones? Now, this is what um, Dr. Elizabeth Court said. Now, what we have to do is um, to screen uh, these claimants. Dr. Fernando Jung um, quote an example of um, Rajao. Uh, he's been stuck in Hong Kong for nine years. Uh, he's been waiting until he is um, 38 um, for his um, status to be verified and still has um, to wait for the UN's confirmation. He doesn't really want to stay in Hong Kong. He's been stuck in Hong Kong for such a lengthy period of time, and the matter has been dragging on. I think the intention was um, for him to um, return to his home country and face persecution rather than being um, um, languishing in Hong Kong. These claimants are waiting to be screened. By your definition, you're calling them bogus. Refugees. You would not call them genuine refugees because it's not until the screening has been completed that um, you know whether they are genuine refugees or not. Now, unless um, you um, complete the whole process, how can you ascertain whether somebody is a, a genuine or a, a refugee or not? Now, the whole thing is to um, make life difficult for these um, claimants um, on the waiting list. And for those um, ethnic minorities, South Asians, uh, who hold um, ID cards in Hong Kong, they're also uh, being humiliated. And there are people holding up 
banners um, outside the um, the mosque, and the Hong Kong people, and this is making life difficult for them. Lang Kong, you. Mr. Lang Kok Hong. Well, I was. Uh, I thought you were talking about combating uh, fake universal suffrage. Where is Elizabeth Quart? Well, if you don't distinguish between the uh, genuine and fake refugees, how can you really help the genuine refugees? We should speed things up. You say that a pig is a chicken. While you do not care for fake universal suffrage, and we have a divided society, we have an umbrella movement, well, let's not uh, go against uh, China and uh, the Communist Party. The uh, PRC is a signatory to the convention, and see why Lang one day lost his conscience totally. Perhaps he has not woken up. Uh, totally, he said that we can, we can consider withdrawing from the convention. Well, does he is he qualified to say something like that? Look at Article One of the Basic Law. We are helping with the CCP. Belts of people come to Hong Kong. Well, the mainland authorities can actually uh, give political asylum to these people, but they don't do that. The public security officials are making money, and lots of people come to Hong Kong. These are the bogus refugees that you refer to. Are you talking to Mr. Zhang De Jiang? If you don't want to work on these people, well, let them come into Hong Kong. Wow, let's get something done. Well, the problem is uh, so serious. We should try to uh, tackle the problem at source. Well, we should uh, reduce uh, the waste at source, right, DAB? Where do these people come from? You are so familiar with the central authorities. Go and talk to them. Bogus refugees, please. Did you do that? Who who is uh, talking to the the his colleague the under secretary? Do something more. You should have done what you have to do long ago. It's because they don't want to do anything. Well, the UNHCR is uh, totally useless, and the two departments are also useless. So who should shoulder the responsibility? You know that UNHCR uh, is uh, useless, and you said that uh, you wait for them to do the work, and then the immigration department and is is not um, uh, doing anything, and you you are treating the problem as it as if it is a time bomb and throwing uh, it against each other. You can't tell us why you are not resolving problem. The legislators here are so. Um, useless. And also, you think that Sri Lanka doesn't have a war? Do you know what is the Tamil tiger? Well, watch more CNN. And don't just watch TVB. Jade. CCTV International Channel is a very good channel. It is uh, well, up on a par with the uh, Russia television uh, channel. It's it's anti-U.S. Well, watch these channels, and don't put yourself into embar embarrassing situation. Sh India, Sri Lanka, don't they have war? And India has the largest uh, communist party, which is um, um, engaged in a riot, and there are. Uh, they are attacking the city. So if you are an idiot, they will show, don't show your idiotic side to us. Chairman, I mean the president. The issue is simple. Well, you said we'll come back to the rogue, uh, bogus refugees. We don't, we shouldn't use the words combat. We should urge 
the two governments, the mainland, the central authorities, and the Hong Kong government to do a better job. And you should not be saying that you should combat the refugees. They are people. How can you combat them? Use a, use a button or an act or what? You shouldn't, shouldn't you, you be saying combating the human trafficking syndicates and combating people? Are you silly, idiotic, or what? Well, it's like just like say, uh, people saying combating locusts. They, the locusts you refer to are people. You are encouraging hatred here. What are you combating against? So coming back to this um, subject, if you say that they are political refugees, you can do screening. They are economic refugees. While well, you say that they take jobs away from us, well, please condemn the unscrupulous employers first. They rather hire the refugees than local people. They ask them to work, say, for two hours, and then they are offered a, a bottle of soft drink only. Holden Chow, haven't you had that kind of experience in uh, when you were young? You were asked to do some favor for other people just for the return of a soft drink. You should be condemning these people. Have you ever condemned them? They, well, they, they can f just find work easily. Can't, no, you should condemn those. These are, are people who don't support the uh, statutory minimum wage, and they are not willing to offer the minimum wage. Please condemn them. Come back against those who earn money from the bogus refugees, take advantage of the poor people. Honorable members. So it's, uh, I don't want to waste any more of my time. The legislature here should protect the underprivileged class. And you are not condemn. We're not condemning the um, unscrupulous employers, and this is so so shameless. Full stop, Mr. Roy Kwong. Thank you, President. We have uh, Mr. Holden Chair moving the motion debate on combating bogus refugees. This is a very bogus topic. You would you say that you would combat the hypocrites? Well. Of course, uh, bogus refugees are bad by the name it suggests, and we have to repatriate these bogus refugees. But we can't paint everyone with the same brush. <coughs> these people are stranded in Hong Kong. They're waiting for their identity to be ascertained. And they you allege them, or, or you term brand them as bogus refugees. Is that the, a kind of a fair description? This is creating panic. This is discrimination against non-Chinese um, ethnic minorities. You are proposing um, the setting up of holding centers. This is just scratching the surface of the problem. The crux of the matter is that the government is not willing to devote more resources to the screening mechanism. What's the problem with the screening mechanism? It's not, um, it's not proper, and it has not fa uh, worked effectively. In 2013, 10% of the uh, percent uh, of refugees seeking asylum and ascertained to be the refugees of Bayou and UNHCR, and those confirmed is only 0.02%. According to some groups' statistics, 13% of the claimants have to uh, wait for seven to eight years, and 29% have to wait for eight to nine years before the results are coming. Let me quote from a media interview. In that interview, uh, several refugees stranded in Hong Kong were interviewed. They said that it's no problem that they have to wait for 10 months, but 10 years. And during the time of waiting, they can't do anything. How Can you imagine how uh, painful it is? If we have to ask a question, we have to ask how come that the uh, application time is so long? If we are to build a holding centers to combat the problem, 
Will this be underprivileged group be become even more underprivileged? Well, um, in this interview, there is um, a comment which touches me, and the interviewer um, said, "The the refugees are not criminals." If you want to combat bogus refugees, you can all use you can use all ways and means. But we have really to distinguish between bogus and genuine refugees. And there is a kind of hostility towards the ethnic minorities when they arrive in Hong Kong. This is not the Hong Kong that we want to see. Why Hong Kong is so successful these days? And one of the main factors is that Hong Kong people embrace universal values. So I speak. Does any other member wish to speak? Mr. Chen Hang Pan, some members claim that uh, combating bogus refugee is splitting the community. This is totally wrong. This is that wrong, and uh, the focus is misplaced. According to government statistics, out of the 3,000 cases, only 30 cases will have been screened in as refugees. It's a success rate or substantiated rate of uh, one in a thousand. What are the others? They are economic migrants. These people can come to Hong Kong to make a living. This is clearly a loophole. Why don't we come back to this system with a loophole? We we would like to help genuine refugees as a civilized society. We must do it. We have to lend a helping hand to those in need. This is what we should do. But we must uh, safeguard the system to prevent abuse. An abuse system has no credibility. Hong Kong will become uh, a place with no immigration uh, regime. Why sh shouldn't we uh, find ways to repatriate bogus refugees? Why is uh, tackling the problem such an attempt in to to split the community? The ten pan Democrats uh, have de described our attempt as uh, discrimination against certain ethnic groups. We are against uh, bogus refugees. It's not about xenophobic sentiments. We have a backlog of more than 10,000 cases. You can see the, 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 uh, their sophistry is uh, so alarming. And they, uh, they are, they are, they, they, there is policy in their comparisons. They want to take the more high ground. Well, I will tell you the real political high ground is the one about uh, personal safety and law and order. If we allow the bogus refugees to stay in Hong Kong, they commit crimes of various sort. Uh, we, we want to get rid of these uh, people and the crimes. That's the moral high ground. How come we have a backlog of uh, 10,000 cases? Because uh, when these people were arrested, 70% of them claimed to be refugees, and then the government had to spend a lot of time and uh, money in uh, screening the application or the claims. It's not that the government didn't want to do it quickly, but according to the government, uh, the, they would uh, make appointments and uh, they would uh, fail to show up, or they would speak one language on one occasion and speak the next another one another language the next occasion. It's not a question of uh, the government doing it slowly. They have actually. Uh, expedited things, but these cases have accumulated over time, and we have spent a lot of money on each and every case. Uh, we have to spend three three thousand four hundred uh, in aid to these claimants. The Oriental Daily uh, exposed that uh, some focused refugees uh, had resold. The food coupons. If they are in real need, how come they could sell the food coupons? Uh, it shows that they don't need the food aid. 
and that's why they want to turn the coupon into money and use it elsewhere. It's said that uh, some members are, and and some media, are misleading the public. The problem is not as serious, and there are only a few cases. Or well, they have ignored the seriousness of the problem, and actually, there's a judge, Judge Lee, query that uh, there must be a case of a uh, champati on the part of some law firms. Why is it that we are trying to play to the gallery if we raise such issues and problems? You you are putting the cart before the horse. Uh, it's really reversing the uh, logic. In Yunnong, there was a suspected uh, rape case involving these people. We don't want to say this. Why can't we exclude these people if we can? We uh, we want to help genuine refugees. Not bogus ones. We have more than ten thousand cases. How can we? How do we handle the thirty genuine cases? If we just spend money on all those bogus ones, uh, we are not able to help the thirty real ones. We must uh, make provisions for deterrent. For example, uh, we can have a camp, just like other countries. What what countries would allow the claimants to be living in the community without knowing where they live exactly? And then the other people in the community are subject to uh, <coughs> threats, real or uh, emotion. The government should uh, crack down on the problem really hard so that uh, the uh, image of uh, our ethnic Minorities will not be tarnished. I feel sorry for our the ethnic minorities because the, they have been affected by these uh, bogus claimants. It's, we shouldn't say that this is a no-go area, or that we're combating bogus refugee is unjust. Uh, this is really outrageous. The government should come up with a good deterrence. We should adopt measures to deter people. Don't let people know that uh, they can uh, make, make such claims once they are arrested for for overstaying in Hong Kong, and then they will be get getting an allowance, and they can um, take up employment illegally. Does any other member wish to speak? Uh, Mr. Houghton Chow, you may now speak on the amendments. The speaking time limit is five minutes. President, on Dr. Fernando Jones' amendment, basically he deleted uh, most of the words there, and it was um, a major overhaul. He's saying that um, the substantiation rate um, in overseas jurisdiction is pretty high. Uh, Thirty-three percent for Australia, forty in the UK. Um, the rate is uh, much higher than that in Hong Kong. So by his um, logic, um, these people are not abusing our mechanism. Now, if I may refer you to some of the UN information, which shows that. Um, Syria, Afghanistan, Somalia, Sudan, Congo, all these countries have um, produced a lot of uh, refugees. 
in Hong Kong, uh, those are coming to Hong Kong to make claims. According to um, many newspaper reports, including the Oriental Daily, I think twenty percent come from India, Vietnam, um, twelve percent uh, Vietnam, twelve percent uh, Bangladesh, uh, ten percent from Indonesia. Mainly from these countries, we cannot say that um, in these uh, countries um, there is uh, no warfare and there is no persecution. According to UN HCR's information, now if you compare these uh, with Syria, um, Sudan, Afghanistan, Congo, the situation is uh, so much different uh, from uh, those countries uh, where these people are coming from. Uh, so are they fleeing warfare and persecution? I think this is um, plain for members to judge. In his speech, um, Dr. Fernando Zhang said effectively that the uh, number of claims uh, has uh, decreased. Mr. Alvin Young echoed uh, his um, sentiments are with um, the decline in the number of um, claims. We should not uh, look at the problem as uh, being serious. I think they are standing logic on his head. Why is it that the number of claims uh, has uh, gone down? Well, it is because the DAB and the Progress Establishment members have been um, urging the Security Bureau to take measures uh, like um, they should uh, combat. Um, illegal immigration uh, th uh, together with uh, the mainland authorities. It is uh, through these measures that we've seen a decline in the number. By the pandemic's logic, the bogus refugees uh, problem is not a serious one. We should not, we do not have um, to devote uh, so much attention to that. By their logic, um, the number of claims uh, would not decline. If anything, it would go up. I think it goes to show the Divide the differences between us and the pandemic members. I've heard a lot of uh, members, Mr. Holden Chow, is speaking on the amendments. Indeed, uh, President, I'm going to talk about uh, Ms. Claudia Mo's amendment. A lot of the pandemic members uh, are uh, similar to um, Ms. Claudia Mo's. What surprises me is that in her amendment, uh, Ms. Claudia Mo basically um, revamped uh, the entire motion, and in her speech, uh, Ms. Mo uh, laid the blame on the central authorities as just blaming um, the central authorities for causing uh, all these uh, illegal immigration. And this is um, really wrong, I think, can be further from the truth. I think she is. Um, uh, condoning um, the bogus refugees, this kind of amendment, uh, President, I would um, um, raise my objection. I think I have to set the record straight, and I hope the members would understand that um, bogus refugee is uh, something that has been besetting Hong Kong for a long time, and a lot of um, law-abiding EM. Um, citizens have been wrongly labelled. I think we have to be fair to them and we have to uh, get this job done well and combat bogus refugees. Thank you, President. Oh, Secretary for Security. President, first of all, I would like to thank um, the members who have spoken on the debate. The debate shows clearly that the Legislative Council and the community are very concerned about the subject. Mr. Holden Chow's original motion and the amendments moved by the other members share a common point, and that is to urge the government to conduct a comprehensive review on the USM. In fact, as I said in my opening remarks, I said that the government has launched early this year a comprehensive review on the policy in handling non refoulement claims, covering pre-arrival control, screening procedures, detention, law enforcement, and removal procedures. And we are studying how to deal with the serious problem of IIs and overstaying through um, the, in those uh, sp uh, sp several aspects in re 
uh, respect of pre arrival pre arrival control, Mr. Holden Chow's uh, motion and in the speeches of many members suggest that the government should strengthen interception of IIs and snakeheads and step up um, the publicity and expand the scope of pre-arrival registration. While many of the suggestions are in line with the measures implemented or about to be rolled out by the government, the government has joined hands with mainland authorities to step up um, combating human trafficking syndicates, and we have taken law enforcement actions. In the past Sunday, the 27th of November, the Hong Kong police and the border control team of mainland public securities, based on intelligence received, took action concurrently on the two places, and we have cracked down on a human trafficking syndicate, arranging for illegal immigrants hidden at at the bottom of a container trucks and over 20 people arrested, including the mastermind and also the container truck driver and taxi driver who were abetted in the action and many eyes. I, we believe that we have neutralized an organized human um, trafficking syndicate. We will continue with our action and we will not rule out more arrests. Mr. Long Kong said that because mainland authorities deliberately not dealt with non refoulement claims, and many um, claimants have been sent to Hong Kong for us to handle. This is uh, purely fabricated and is out of line with the reality. In fact, the mainland authorities and local authorities are joining hands to crack down on IIs and to um, ease the problem of non refoulement claims. For example, since early this year, Hong Kong authorities and the Guangdong Guangxing authorities have took, taken law enforcement actions on IIs. IIs. Five major joint operations have been mounted, and we have arrested a total of 300 members of human trafficking syndicates. And the mainland authorities have intercepted over 10,000 non-Chinese IIs. Apart from cracking down on IIs, in, return, in terms of um, immigration control, the government plans to launch an online pre-arrival registration system for Indian arrivals in early 2017 to facilitate the system's implementation. The Immigration Department has actively approached the Indian Consulate General in Hong Kong, Indian Chamber of Commerce, Aviation, Shipping, Tourism, and other business sectors to brief them on the system. In the debate, there are questions on whether the claimants should be regarded as IIs. Let me give you some figures here. Among the claimants, whose cases are waiting to be dealt, 51% are IIs and 49% are those uh, legal travelers who overstayed and the majority of them only lodge their claims after they are um, intercepted. Th they indeed are also illegal immigrants because before they uh, filed their claims, they have already breached the immigration Ordinance. And as I said in my opening remarks, the, since the commencement of the USM, the Immigration de Department has received 13,618 cases. 78% are new cases. Uh, in other words, before the Upper Market case ruling was made, they have never lodged their non refoulement claims. And some members said, still said that is because of the court's rulings, um, then, then that's, uh, there is a backlog of cases because the old cases have to be rehandled again, driving up the number of cases and hence the backlog of cases. This is also not true. Dr. Kwakaki also pointed out that the Immigration Department and the UNHCR lack coordination. And in fact, the UNHCR, uh, before the USM commenced operation, announced that they would stop dealing with uh, refugee applications in Hong Kong. And 
in screen um, in reviewing the screening procedures, the SARG started reviewing the relevant provisions in the immigration um, department uh, ordinance, including setting a more reasonable period for various procedures and cutting down on chances for claimants to abuse the procedures. And in the process, we would take reference extensively from experiences and measures in other countries. And we will also listen carefully to views expressed by uh, international organizations, um, including UN Committee against torture, NGOs, legal professional bodies, and district uh, representatives and stakeholders. The Secretary for Security is now in Europe to understand the experience of UK and Germany on screening procedures, setting up of holding centres, providing legal assistance, and expediting the removal procedures. Mr. Nathan Law said that the UN Committee Against Torture criticized Hong Kong government for lacking a stringent me uh, screening mechanism, and there is uh, no interpreter uh, arranged for the meeting. In the, the conclusion remarks made in December 2015, the committee has never made that kind of statement. On the contrary, the committee welcomed um, the Immigration Department uh, passed the 2012 Amendment uh, Ordinance and welcomed the implementation of USM in Hong Kong and used other applicable grounds to vet the application. So I don't agree with Mr. Nathan Law's remarks. The government will uh, amend the legislation uh, to improve the mechanism, but then it takes time to draft and scrutinize legislative amendments. Even if the government proceeds through steam, the new scre screening mechanism can't be implemented instantly. Therefore, we have conducted an internal review, and the Immigration Department expects that handling capacity next year can be increased by 75% to 5,000 cases each year. We hope to clear the backlog of cases. The number of trained lawyers should be able to cope with the short-term target of handling 5,000 cases each year. However, the DLS uh, cannot uh, provide a sufficient number of lawyers. So on top of the DLS, we must launch a pilot scheme to increase the number um, of cases that can be covered under the P publicly funded legal assistance. And the same group of lawyers should be um, able to provide more uh, assistance to more uh, claimants. Ms. Eunice Young is concerned about the um, uh, implementation details of the pilot scheme. We will continue to uh, discuss with the two lawyer associations on the details, and we hope to roll out the pilot in early 2017. We would also take reference from the DLS on the average uh, legal cost for each case so that um, the um, the claimants can get um, legal assistance. Mr. James Toe's amendments and on Mr. Yun Young and Mr. Leung Chu Young's mentioned about the training for personnel processing the claims. All along, all such personnel of Immigration Department and Appeal Board have to undergo comprehensive training before they start their screening work. And we have invited overseas and local experts to hold talks to make sure that such personnel understand the legal requirements and they will be given refresher courses uh, every now and then to uh, be to, to keep them updated on the latest local and overseas court cases. Ms. Eunice Yun mentioned something about the application grants under USM. In all our documents, we said that all the application grants will be considered under USM. The Immigration Department has made an explanatory uh, remarks in relation to Bill of Rights Article 2, and we tried to make um, clarify the matter for claimants. In any case, the claimants have a responsibility to furnish all their documents at one go to the Immigration Department for its consideration. Some members also suggested that we should commit 
more resources and manpower to deal with the claims. In fact, in the past few years, the government has been devoting resources to on that front. In this year alone, the Immigration Department has increased the number of staff from 205 to 280, an increase of over 40 percent. And the appeal board members, 28 members, have increased to 52 members, doubled, and it will continue to rise. And the expenditure from uh, 2011, 287 million to 1.1 billion dollars this year, so 300 percent increase. So it goes to show that the government is indeed committing more resources. But then, if we don't pluck the loopholes and to prevent abuse of the uh, system, no matter how many much more resources uh, are devoted, it won't help. So the government must adopt a multi-pronged approach. Apart from expediting the screening, we must uh, to um, must uh, tackle the problem at source. We try to cut down abuse, uh, reduce the incentive for IIs to come to Hong Kong, and expedite repatriation procedures. We should do a comprehensive re review to tackle the root of the problem. Many members sa suggested that um, Holding centers can be set up to settle and manage claimants. Undeniably, detention and holding centers can lessen the impact of IIs on the society and public order. However, to implement the measure, we will face immense challenges in the aspects of law, resources, and management. The government will study carefully how to adopt more effective measures to minimize the impact of claimants on the society on the premise that such measures are legal. Mr. Ho Kai Ming and Mr. Pun Xiaoping and Mr. Michael Luke expressed concern about cracking down on illegal workers and their employers. In recent months, the Immigration Department has continuously strengthened law enforcement action. In the first 10 months of 2016, the Department mounted 476 operations against non-Chinese illegal workers, including joint operations with, with other LEAs. The number represents a rise of 71 percent compared to the same period last year, 421 non-Chinese illegal workers and 254 local employers were arrested, up 26 percent and 44 percent respectively compared to the same period last year. The law requires employers to take all reasonable or practicable steps to ensure that job seekers are lawfully employable. They should check job seekers' ID cards or valid travel documents. Now, if in doubt, the employers should question job seekers so as to ascertain whether they are lawfully employable, or else the employers can be prosecuted or um, sentenced to, to imprisonment. We will step up our publicity to remind employers it is a serious offense to employ illegal workers as well as the requirements of the law and case laws on em on employers. Mr. Wu Chi Wai suggested that the um, claimants who have committed a crime be re treated, be repatriated immediately. The CFA ruled in open market case that the Article 3 of the B BORO uh, confers a absolute and non derogable right on the claimants. This is the ruling of the court. So how no matter how unacceptable and dangerous of a of a person's behavior, including the fact that he has committed a serious crime, if it is confirmed that in another country he will face a high risk of inhumane treatment the person cannot be repatriated to the home country. And because of this ruling, the immigration department cannot just because the claimant has committed serious crime refuse to deal with his claim and repatriate him immediately. Mr. James Toe asked the government in amendment to provide reasonable assistance to claimants. In fact, the SWD through NGOs have been providing humanitarian assistance to the claimants so that they will not be in a plight when stranded in Hong Kong. The government has a duty that 
uh, to make sure that the claimants uh, will not be applied when they are staying in Hong Kong. But then, at the same time, we should not create a mag magnet effect and attract more IIs to Hong Kong. So we must strike a balance between the two. Mr. Yu Chong Yim suggested that we should allow certain claimants to work. Allowing claimants to work will attract more people to come to Hong Kong to earn a living. And going by our past experience, when the government relaxes immigration control, it will can be um, used by snake hats and um, spread rumors and mislead the IIs into believing that they can work in Hong Kong. And as a result, um, there will be a high risk of um, vast uh, quantity of IIs coming to Hong Kong. And in the court's uh, ruling, it is also stated that the, the immigration department's um, ban on IIs in working in Hong Kong is constitutional and legal. I must reiterate that the UN Convention on Refugees has never been applied to Hong Kong, and the SARG will not verify the refugee status of anyone. Therefore, there is no legal basis on Ms. Claudia Mo's amendment, um, uh, which says that Hong Kong has a duty to verify the refugee status. And Mr. Dr. Kokaki says that refugees will become part of the Hong Kong community. There is no legal basis for such remarks, and it's inaccurate. I definitely disagree with that. Under no circumstance will non refoundment claimants be regarded as refugees, and they will not have the right to vote a vote in Hong Kong. Dr. Fernando Zhang, in his amendment, said that the USM has a set a thre high threshold and there is a low substantiation rate, and his conclusion that the USM is unfair. I must say again that, as I said in the opening remarks of the debate, the USM was drawn up based on the torture um, against the torture statutory um, mechanism, and it is also based on the local court rulings and overseas practices. We have uh, talked to the sector and the let go on that, and it was passed by the let go in 2012. And every case is independently vetted by the case manager of immigration department. And before we work on each case, the immigration department will issue a notice to the claimants, setting out all the details of the procedures. There will be briefings for the claimants um, on the the content of the notice, and the claimants have every opportunity to advance his justifications and provide documents um, to substantiate his case, including filling out a form and attending a briefing. And he can set out all the reasons for his claims, and he can provide all uh, relevant documentation. So in the whole uh, screening process, um, the claimants can be offered interpretation service and publicly funded legal assistance. And the threshold and standards were set based upon the CFA's ruling on Uber market and other uh, local court rulings, and it's fair and just. The decision of the immigration departments and our rationale will be uh, notified, I mean, will be um, we will inform the claimants the our decisions and our grounds, and the claimants can appeal to the appeal board, torture claims appeal board, and if they are unhappy with the board's decision, they can also g seek review of the decision through um, judicial means. So I don't agree with Dr. Zhang's conclusion. The government is actively and seriously considering reviewing the strategy on handling non refoundment claims. We would comprehensively study all feasible measures so that those who are genuinely entitled to non refoundment protection can be identified early. Those whose claims can, are not substantiated will be repatriated to their city of origin, country of origin to minimize uh, the 
impact, adverse impact on the law and order, employment market, and public resources in Hong Kong. Our policy objective is that we should meet the highest standard of fairness in handling non refoulement claims in accordance with the law and at the same time do the best job in immigration management to cut down on chances for the mechanism to be abused. Those with claims rejected should be repatriated to their country of origin ASAP. I thank once again for members' um, remarks and I I hope that in the future we can continue to count on the letters of support when we propose measures for improving the mechanism in the future. So I speak. I now call upon uh, Mr. Ho Kai Ming to move an amendment to the motion. Mr. Ho, President, I move and Mr. Holden Charles' motion be amended. I now propose the question to you, and that is that the amendment moved by Mr. Ho Kai Ming to Mr. Charles' motion be passed. I now put a question to you as stated. With those in favor, please raise their hands. Ms. Tanya uh, Chen uh, claims that the division the bell will uh, ring for five minutes.
開始表決。Please proceed to vote. 請各位核對。Please check your votes. If there are no questions, the voting now ends. I display the results. Ms. Cordimbo, Ms. Michael Tien, Mrs. Regina Ip, if there are no questions, um, voting now ends. I display the results. FC. Page one present twenty one four nine and against no abstention. Geographical constituencies thirty one present sixteen four fifteen against no abstention. The um, the um, question is agreed by majority of um, the, each of the two groups of members that de declare the amendment passed. As um, the motion has been, the, the amendment has been passed. Um, Ms. Um, Mo, um, Mr. James Hin, uh, will withdraw their amendments. Ms. Starry Lee, President, I move that in the event of further divisions being claimed uh, on this motion, this council shall proceed to the division after the bell has been rung for one minute. I now propose the question to you, and that is that the motion moved by Mr. Starry be passed. Does any member wish to speak? I now propose the question as stated. With those in favour, please raise their hands. Mr. James Toe claims the division. The bell will ring for five minutes.
Please proceed to vote. Mr. Dr. Pierre Chen, please check your votes. If there are no questions, voting now ends. I display the results. FC 31 present, 29 for, 1 against, uh, no abstention. GC 32 present, 34, no objection, 2 abstentions. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the motion passed. Order, please. I order that in the event of further divisions being claimed in respect of this motion, the, this council pro shall proceed uh, to a division of the bill has been wrong for one minute. Ms. Um, Yonghua Yan, uh, Mr. Ho Kai Ming's amendment has been passed. I have given leave for you to revise the terms of your amendment and sent out in the paper issued to members. When moving your revised amendment, you may speak for up to three minutes to explain the revised terms in your amendment, but you may not express further views on the motion and the amendments, nor may you repeat what you've already covered in your earlier speech. You may now move your re revised amendment. President, I move that. Um, Mr. Holden Chow's motion as amended by Mr. Ho Kai Ming be further amended by my revised amendment. I now propose the question to you, and that is that Ms. Yong Hua Yan's amendment to Mr. Holden Chow's motion as amended by Mr. Ho Kai Ming be passed. I now put a question to you as stated. With those in favour, please raise their hands. Ms. Holden Bo claims the division. The bell will ring for one minute. Please proceed to vote. Please check your votes. So if there are no questions, voting now ends. Let us play the results. FC 31 present, 21 for, 9 against. GC 32 present, 16 for, 16 against. I think the question is not agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the amendment negatived. Dr. Priscilla Long, as the amendment of uh, Mr. Ho Kai Ming has been passed, I've given leave for you to revise the terms of your amendment to set out to the paper issued to members. When moving your revised amendment, you may speak for up to three minutes to explain the revised terms in your amendment, but you may not express further views on the motion and the amendments, nor may you repeat what you've already covered in your earlier speech. You may now move your revised amendment. President, I move that Mr. Holden Chow's motion as amended by Mr. Ho Kai Ming be further amended by my revised amendment. President, um, what the um, I mean, the um, bogus are refugees. If they don't have um, the reconnaissance paper, they will still come to Hong Kong. My amendment is amended by uh, Mr. Ho Kai Ming. Mainly, um, says that 
um, when these um, claimants come to Hong Kong, they shouldn't be issued with um, the reconnaissance paper. Now, you are very concerned about um, the genuine uh, refugees, and if you do so, um, this would help. Um, with the genuine uh, refugees, the opposition members are concerned um, about uh, these uh, refugees who are subject to um, torture. They should support my amendment because we have to distinguish between genuine and bogus, uh, lawful and unlawful. Dr. Priscilla Leung, I'm done with my speech, uh, President. Please uh, do not move your amendment yet. I think it is uh, Mr. Pun Siu Ping who uh, should move uh, his amendment first. Mr. Pun Siu Ping. President, I've uh, withdrawn uh, my amendment already with uh, Mr. Ho Kai Ming's amendment uh, being passed. Dr. Priscilla Leung. Please. Oh, you give me a second um, attempt. I like um, all members uh, from different political persuasion uh, to support my amendment. Uh, we have to uh, remove um, the reconnaissance paper. The administration didn't address this point. I now propose the question to you, and that is that. Um, Dr. Priscilla Leung's amendment to Mr. Holden Chow's motion as amended by Mr. Ho Kai Ming be passed. Um, will those in favour please raise their hands? Mr. Leung Kuo Hong claims that if you should, the bell will ring for one minute. Please proceed to vote. Mr. Junius Ho, please check your votes. If there are no questions, uh, voting now ends. I display the results. FC. 32 present, 16 for, 11 against, 4 abstentions. GC, 32 present, 5 for, 17 against, 10 abstentions. The question is not agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members or present. I declare the amendment negatived. Mr. Holden Chow, you still have 1 minute 46 seconds. To reply, the debate will come to a close after Mr. Chow has replied. Mr. Chow, please. President, in um, in the debate um, today and yesterday, we can see clearly that. Um, the pandams are against um, the bogus refugees. In fact, indirectly, they are um, shielding um, the bogus refugees, and they're waving this uh, humanitarian banner, and they're worsening the situation in Hong Kong. And now I understand why um, the pandams are uh, coming uh, down on the side of um, Lao Siu Lai, uh, Yao Wei Ching, and Sixtus Leung. Now, when they um, commit wrongdoings, uh, you're shielding them. And I remember not so long ago, um, the former president, um, Chen Shui bian uh, was on the take. And he uh, came out, he was prosecuted, and he came out and said that he was persecuted. And many of these uh, pandams are 
um, a, um, a reincarnation of Chen Shui Bian, that they don't want to tackle this problem, and they are framing us, and they are saying that we're tarring everybody with the same brush, and we're being discriminatory. I think effectively they are hiding their views. Mr. Long Guo Hong, I heard Mr. Holden Chow, uh, Ward Decker, why they call us uh, Chen Shui Bian. Uh, is he saying that we've been um, presidents before? Ms. Claudia Mo, president, I think he is imputing um, member's motive. Uh, how can he link um, these bogus refugees he's, uh, with um, Lao Tzu Lai uh, and Leung and Yao uh, issues? It's not a point of order. Mr. Holden Chow, would you um, be prepared to clarify? I I said that um, there are reincarnations of Chen Shui Bin. Uh, Bin uh, you don't have um, to to fit yourself into the category. If you do so, please, President. A long hair. You said uh, a moment ago that um, there were uh, illegal workers, and we should um, catch the employers. Uh, we should not um, harass um, the bogus refugees. You are. Are really blaming everything. Um, you blame um, the central authorities for the absence of universal suffrage. I think you are uh, uh, using these red herrings, and you're shielding the bogus refugees. You're diverting attention. That's your logic. Um, and I'll put the question to you. Uh, with those in favour, uh, please raise their hands. Um, Ms. Claudia Mole claims the division of the bell will ring for one minute. Please proceed to vote. Mr. Yip Kin Yun. Well, members, please check the votes. If there are no questions, uh, voting now ends. I display the results. The results are Fangshuan constituency, 32 present, 21 for, 10 against. Geographical constituencies, 32 present, 16 for, 16 against. The question is not agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the motion negatived. Request made.